Welcome to the second module of the three-prong series on cycle menus. This module is broken up into three parts, and this is the last part where we will finish the module by walking through the steps of building a cycle menu. As we have learned in our considerations and menu planning sections, cycle menus are about variety, color, texture, and visual appeal, among other important factors. So a great way to plan your cycle menu is to truly visualize it using component cards. These cards, as you can see in our example on the screen, are double-sided with the item description and crediting information on one side, and the name and picture of the item on the other. We've provided a template of the component cards with the materials on our training webpage or you can feel free to develop a version of your own. This method of planning is a great way to develop your cycle menus, step back, evaluate, and tweak as needed. So grab your cards and a big table, and let's get started. Once you've gathered everything, you know what recipes you want to use and have the crediting information available, you want to start plotting out each day, each week of your cycle menu. First, work on the main part of your meal. Determine which entree or entrees you want to serve each day. Once you've completed this step, you'll want to take a step back and evaluate your decisions. Is there a variety within the week and throughout the cycle? Are adjustments necessary to provide more diversity, familiarity, or novelty? In our example here, we're planning for a K-5 school and plan to serve one entree to all students each day. You can see here that we've laid out our entree component cards for the week. On Monday, we're going to serve an Asian chicken broccoli bowl. Tuesday will be bean and cheese burrito. Wednesday, hamburgers. Thursday, a yummy mac and cheese. And on Friday, a huge favorite, pizza. A quick look at our component cards will show us if we're meeting our minimum crediting requirements. We're working on a five-day week, so we'll look at the five-day week meal pattern and focus on grains and meat-meat alternate components. Here you can see that the minimum daily requirements for the K-5 age grade group for both grains and meat-meat alternate is one ounce equivalent, while the minimum weekly requirements for both components is eight ounce equivalents. A look back at our component cards shows us that we have met the daily and weekly minimums for our choices. Remember too, the other considerations of menu planning. Do we have enough variety in this menu? Are we varying our options to meet the needs of our student population and our staff? If not, we may want to make some changes, but for now, let's stick with this menu and continue on. The next step is to think about any side dishes that you might be offering. When dealing with a menu that involves several different entree choices, you will need to determine if these items will pair with a specific entree or if they'll be available to all students regardless of what they choose. Side dishes may include a Spanish style rice to be served with enchiladas, or maybe a hearty whole grain rich breadstick to go with lasagna. Once you've determined your side dishes and where they should go, you will want to again step back and take a look at your menu. Evaluate the flow and make adjustments where needed. For our menu, we've decided to add a few side dishes during the week. On the day that we serve burritos, we're offering tortilla chips and homemade salsa. Our burgers will be paired with sweet potato puffs and the mac and cheese will come with a whole grain roll. Next, we have our fruits and vegetables. Though all components are important, these two may have some of the most requirements surrounding them. First, you'll need to determine how you want to serve your fruits and vegetables. Do you want to provide alternating items each day individually on the serving line? Or do you want to provide a salad bar each day, either with the same offerings daily or with changes? Start placing your fruits and vegetables into your menu or start to build your salad bar. Remember to think about variety, flavors and their compatibility together, different textures, freshness of items, etc. Once you've made your decisions and placed your items in your menu, then again step back and evaluate. 
As you're building, each time you step back to evaluate, you're looking at the cohesiveness of the menu as a whole, each day, and then for the week. Are you hitting all those points that we discussed in our menu building basics? Do you have variety, familiarity, novelty? Are there different colors, textures, and shapes? Are you providing things that students prefer? Have you brought in any of your local items or seasonal products? Here, we've chosen our fruits and vegetables for our sample menu. Looking at our component cards, we can see that we are providing two kinds of fruit each day, one canned and one fresh, and one vegetable. Try to choose fruits and vegetables that will complement your entree choices. Keep in mind there are several requirements surrounding these components, in particular our vegetables. Let's look at the five-day menu grid again. Not only do we want to consider our daily and weekly minimums, but we need to ensure that we've included each of the vegetable subgroups in their minimum quantities. Let's take a look at our proposed menu. For our proposed menu, we plan to offer a half a cup serving of our fruit choices and three quarter cup serving of our vegetable choice. We need to remember on Friday that we need to offer one and a half cups of the salad option to credit as that three fourth cup vegetable serving. Finally, you're going to add any of those extras that round out your menu. You may be offering a treat like a whole grain rich cookie or maybe you're offering little cups of freshly popped popcorn to celebrate a new movie premiere. Add those to the days that need them. And don't forget your condiments. Whether you're providing specific condiments to complement your entree choices each day, or you provide the same condiment options every day, you'll want to include those in your cycle menu development so that your nutritional analysis is as accurate as possible. For your knowledge, and in case the state ever has to do nutritional analysis themselves, this is a great tool to complete. One great choice that we'll incorporate in our proposed menu is a flavor station. You can offer students herbs and salt-free seasonings to add flavor without increasing the sodium. And let's go ahead and offer a treat and add a whole grain rich chocolate chip cookie. Don't forget to add your milk. Remember that you must offer at least two different varieties of milk at each meal. Now you have your first cycle menu completed. And of course, it's time to evaluate it again. When you first start building cycle menus, you're definitely going to be doing a lot of that. Looking at the menu, considering all the elements of menu planning to determine if your menu meets each item, having others look at the menu and evaluate it over and over and over. But once you have a solid menu and you feel comfortable with the process, later menus may simply be small adaptations of the first. Or you may determine a system or a skeleton menu that you can work from. For instance, you may decide that Mondays will be meatless entrees, Tuesdays and Thursdays will always be some sort of chicken, Wednesdays will be beef, and Fridays will always be some sort of pizza. From there, it's easier to start filling in the blanks and building. When you evaluate your menu, you want to not only look at those menu planning basics, but you need to look at the big two requirements of the program. So you'll need to evaluate it for crediting, meaning does it meet the daily and weekly minimums? Are the vegetable subgroups represented, etc.? And once you've determined compliance and crediting, then the menu should be evaluated for nutritional value to make sure that each week fits into the ranges for calories, saturated fat, trans fat, and sodium. By doing each of these checks, you're preparing yourself in the best way possible for your administrative review. So, not only are you planning a menu that will end up making your life easier when it comes to ordering, planning, serving, etc., it will make your life easier when it comes to your administrative review as well. So here we have it, our completed menu for the first week of our cycle. Of course, in this example, we've only planned a week, but when planning your own cycle menu, you may want to lay out several weeks at a time or plan each week one by one. 
This method of planning your cycle menu allows you to visualize the items, their fit with one another, and the variety offered. But the best method is the one that works for you. Now that we've created our menu, we can evaluate it, ensure that it meets crediting and nutritional guidelines. Let's take a closer look at evaluating the crediting. Your best bet is to use the USDA Weekly Meal Planning Worksheets. These will show you if you're meeting minimums with all of your components. In addition, these worksheets are the same ones used by auditors during your administrative review, so you'll be ahead of the game when the information is requested. Here's a quick snapshot of the Weekly Meal Planner, but let's go through this exercise together. together. So here we have the USDA meal planner. You can see that this is an Excel workbook with several different tabs across the bottom. Luckily, there are instructions for this menu planner or menu worksheet, which are on the first tab. If you've never used it before, these are great instructions to go through to learn what you need to do on each tab. But we're going to go through and just look at our one week meal plan. So the first thing that needs to happen is we need to enter all of our meals on our All Meals tab. So I'll show you an example. On Monday, as you know, we're going to be serving the Asian chicken and broccoli bowl as our main entree. So we're going to type that in to the meal planner on the first row. Now it asks us to enter our crediting information and from our component cards, we know that the Asian chicken and broccoli bowl has two ounce equivalents of meat meat alternate and it has two ounce equivalents of grain. Now this menu planner does ask of the grains offered how many are whole grain rich, but as you know, Currently, the requirement is that 100% be whole grain rich. So we know that we're serving all whole grain. So we're going to put that two ounces of the two ounce equivalents are whole grain rich. Now also on this uh, line, it asks us how much total fruit is being offered. And as we mentioned, we're offering a half a cup each day and we're doing the half cup mixed fruit on this day. So these are drop down menus. So we're going to select a half a cup. It asks if we're offering any fruit juice. Um, as you know, the requirement is that you can only offer half uh, the amount of juice for your total amount of fruit for the week. But we're not offering juice on this day, so we're not going to put anything in there. And then it asks how much how much total vegetables we're offering. So from our component card, we know that the broccoli counts for half a cup of dark green vegetables. And we're also serving three quarters of a cup of steamed vegetables on this day. So because it asks for total amount offered, we're going to put one and a fourth cups. So we'll select one and a fourth cups. Moving to the right, it also asks us for how much fluid milk we are offering. We're offering a variety, but it just wants to know how much is offered with the meal. So because they choose one or the other, we're going to say that one cup is offered. As you can see here, it's in cups and it's just asking us for how many cups, so one cup. So what you'll need to do for your menu is enter each of your entree items that you're serving, going down the line on the All Meals tab. If you're serving several entrees um, within one day, you will need to enter each of the entrees along with the amount of vegetables, fruits, and milk offered in total to students on that day. So for instance, if you had another entree option, you would enter it here in line two, you would give the meat, meat alternate and grain crediting information. Um, and then for the fruit, um, unless that entree option had fruit incorporated with it, the total amount offered would still be a half a cup. But the vegetables would be different. If that entree item did not include vegetables in it, then the number 
of cups of vegetables that would be offered if a student chose this entree item would just be that three-fourth cup steamed vegetables, which we're allowing all students to choose. So again, we'll do that for each of the days that we're serving. And because we're doing just one week, we'll go ahead and do it for all five days. So here you can see that we have completed all five days of our entree items with our meat, meat alternate ounce equivalents, our grain ounce equivalents, and the total amount of fruit, vegetables, and milk that we'll be offering. Now that's just the first step. Once you have all of the information in the All Meals tab, you're going to want to populate that information into each day. So here we are back with just our Asian chicken broccoli bowl. On the bottom of the workbook, you'll see that there are different day tabs. So we need to populate the entree or entrees that we're serving on Monday into the Monday tab. Clicking on the Monday tab, you can see that there are drop-down menus. So this is important. You need to make sure that you put all of your entree items into the All Meals tab so that it will populate in the drop-down menu so that you can select it. So on Monday, we're serving the Asian Chicken Broccoli Bowl, and when we select it, it populates the information that we included on the All Meals tab into the Monday tab. Now moving to the right, there's more information that we need to put in the daily tab. So we need to enter the types of milk varieties that we're offering. So we're actually offering the skim fat-free unflavored and we're offering skim or fat-free chocolate. So that's the skim fat-free flavored. This tells you that you are meeting the requirement for the day of offering a variety of milk. Moving even further and going down a little bit, we're going to need to put in the subgroups of vegetables that we are offering. So you can see that it is separated into the different subgroups, dark green, red orange, beans, peas, or legumes, starchy vegetables, and other. So on this day, with our Asian chicken and broccoli bowl, we're offering broccoli. And we know from our component card that we are offering a half a cup and broccoli is in the dark green subgroup. So we're going to use the drop down menu to choose what dark green we're serving, broccoli, and the quantity, half a cup. Now, if you were serving several different types of dark green, you would include them listing them below and at the top, there is a largest amount of dark green vegetables to select on Monday. So this is the largest amount that a student could select on any given day or on this given day of dark green vegetables. Because we're only offering the one, our largest amount is half a cup. Moving to the right, on this day, we're not offering any red orange, bean peas or legumes or starchy vegetable. Our mixed steamed vegetables would actually be considered other. So we're going to go to the other subgroup and we're going to enter in what we are offering. Now, because it's a mix, it's not a specific vegetable that we'll be selecting. So we have to go to the bottom and select other unspecified and the amount. So again, we're offering three quarters of a cup and because it's the only other subgroup that we're offering, the largest amount that a student can choose is three quarters of a cup. Now, because we chose the other within the other subgroup, we need to indicate what is being offered. So if we scroll down to the bottom, there is a space for us to enter, actually type in what's being offered. Steamed vegetable mixture. So we've completed the first tab, Monday, with all of the information. And we'll wanna do that for each of the additional tabs, Tuesday through Friday, if you're a five-day school week. Once you do that, you'll be able to see if you're meeting your crediting requirements. So if we go to all the way to the end of the workbook, you'll see that there is a weekly report tab. 
Here you'll see everything that you entered. It will show you Monday through Friday since we're on a five day week. First we see our vegetable subgroups and the amounts we have listed here, the requirements for the week here, and whether we are actually meeting the requirements here. So if you get a green yes, you know that you are meeting the requirements. Going down again, we see our meat meat alternate component. Each day is listed. Our weekly total is here. The requirement is here. And we can see that we have met the requirement with our green yes. Scrolling further down, we can see our grains with each day listed, our weekly total, and the weekly requirement. Now keep in mind that USDA has provided flexibility for the maximum requirement for both meat meat alternates and grains. So even though we have a red no here on our maximum grains, that's okay because that's not something that is a requirement at this time. Now going down to the bottom, we can see that we've provided one cup of fluid milk each day with a total of five for the week, meeting our weekly requirement, and that we offered a variety. So this is a great way to see that your cycle menu has met your crediting requirements. Next, we want to evaluate this menu for our nutrients to determine if we're within the required ranges for calories, saturated fat, trans fat, and sodium. You may use an approved nutrient analysis software if you like. In most cases, if you're meeting the meal pattern for your age grade group, you're most likely within the nutrient standards. To find a USDA-approved nutrient analysis software, visit the USDA FNS site. There are also self-evaluation tools out there that you can use. We found two to be very useful. The first is the UC Davis Successful Menu Planning Evaluation Tool. This will actually take you through each aspect that we've discussed, from looking at whether you have the proper components and are meeting your minimums, to whether you've incorporated USDA foods and have provided a varied enough menu. Another great tool is a Smarter Lunchroom self-assessment. Smarter Lunchrooms really looks at the ways that we can make small changes in the environment within our sites to help students make the healthy choice. This evaluation tool looks very deeply into not only food choices for your menus, but your overall environment as well. Now, after we have built the menu and evaluated it to death, we need to determine if any tweaks are needed to meet the requirements. Do we need to switch out any menu items, flip-flop items to give it more variety or a better flow, or do something different to make it more interesting? If so, then go ahead and do that. And if you do, you'll want to go ahead and evaluate it again for compliance. Now that you're done, plot your cycle out on the district calendar. Make sure you take note of where holidays fall and think about how you might need to tweak the menu for that. Are you set to do a fish filet dish on Monday, but have that Monday off? Will the quality of the fish really last from a Friday delivery to a Tuesday service? If not, maybe you want to trade out that day. Are there some special celebrations going on that you want to celebrate? Maybe Dr. Seuss's birthday. Think about those instances and where and how you will deviate from your cycle menu and how to build that into everything associated with your menu, planning your ordering, your storage, etc. The beauty is that the cycle is flexible and you can mold and bend it however you need to. Now you've worked really hard on this menu, so the last thing that you want to do is simply put it in place without any rollout promotion or fanfare. You want to let people know that things are changing for the better. First, think about when you want to roll out your new menu. It's best if you can leave yourself some time between creating the menu and implementing it. You want to be able to let people know the change is coming, get them excited about it, and make the most of the work that you've done. Who are your target audiences? Sure, students are ultimately going to be the ones consuming items from the new menu, but who else is important to tell about the change? Who do you need to get on your side? Once you've determined your audiences, think about those major areas that will interest those audiences. Finally, how do you want to approach the task of getting that information out to them? 
Make sure that your administrators know what you're planning even before you start planning it. No one can throw a wrench in a project like an admin who finds out they weren't told that something was changing in their school. Get them on your side from the beginning and they'll be a very important ally. A great idea for introducing your new cyclamen use to the school is to take them to a staff meeting. Ask for about five to 10 minutes to present the changes to all staff at once. Get them excited about the changes so that they will talk to their students with excitement. Talk to teachers one-on-one -on -one in hallways or staff lounges. Engage them. Hey, did you hear that we're working on a cycle menu that's going to allow us to provide more fresh seasonal options to students? You'll have to tell your kids to check out the harvest of the month days. They're going to be lots of fun. Or don't just tell teachers about the amazing things that you're doing. Involve them in it. Bring them in for a special taste test of items. Give them a sneak peek of what students will have choice of. Teachers have the ear of the students. Whether their students like them or not, they listen. And when a teacher makes a bad comment about the lunchroom or cafeteria food, it can derail everything we're trying to build. So get them interested and invested in what we do. Of course, we also want to think outside of the school. We want students and staff to get excited about our new menus, but we also need buy-in from the parents. There are several things that can be done to involve them in the process. First, consider sending out an announcement before a new cycle menu is rolled out. Write a short story for the principal's newsletter or send a, hey, guess what, type of flyer home to parents. This will make them aware of the change, but also hopefully get them interested. Make up tasters for an upcoming parent night or open house event. Station yourself where you'll be accessed by the majority of the parents and provide food and information about the amazing things that you're providing for their children. Have a bring your grandparent to lunch day. Parents are big influences, but grandparents have a lot of power too. Make it a fun day with one of your best dishes. If you have the time and inclination, you could even develop a menu advisory committee made up of parents interested in their children's health and well-being. This group could provide practical advice about student preferences. Last but not least, we want to make sure that our student population knows what is coming up and get them excited about the changes. A great way to get student buy-in is to let them be involved. Have the art class create some posters, banners, or signs to announce the new menu. If there is a marketing class, maybe they can develop an advertising plan, make announcements on the PA system, or even broadcast on the school television station if one exists. You might also have a contest to name certain dishes, within reason, of course. Set up specific do's and don'ts for names and then let them get creative. Use the winning names when serving those dishes. When first starting a new cycle menu, don't be afraid to provide samples of products or, res or recipes to give students the opportunity to try before they buy. Finally, ask for feedback. Set out a table where students can vote on favorites or make anonymous suggestions. This concludes module two of this training series. Please proceed to module three, procurement, where you'll learn procurement basics, cost-saving tips, and how to expand the use of USDA foods and seasonal produce in your cycle menus.